In the year 1903, an event occurred that would forever change the course of human history. The Wright brothers successfully conducted the first manned flight. This remarkable achievement marked the dawn of aviation and opened up new possibilities for human exploration and connectivity. But behind this monumental feat lies the inspiration drawn from a visionary who, centuries earlier, had the foresight to sketch the very concept of flight. This individual, with an unparalleled imagination, delved into the mechanics of birds and the principles of aerodynamics, laying the groundwork for what would eventually become the science of flight. This is Rapid Rewinds, and today, let's embark on the remarkable journey of the Renaissance artist, none other than Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo was born in 1452, in the Tuscan village of Anciano, not far from Vinci, the town that gave him his renowned surname, da Vinci a meaning of Vinci. He was an illegitimate child, his parents did not marry even after his birth, and his mother, Caterina, a peasant woman, remarried and started a new family when he was still very young. From the age of five, Leonardo was raised on his father Ser Piero's estate in Vinci, where Ser Piero worked as a lawyer and notary. He was also nurtured by his uncle, Francesco da Vinci, who had a deep love for nature, an appreciation that he came to share as he grew. His formal schooling was limited to basic reading, writing, and arithmetic. Although he really struggled with reading and often got distracted easily, he was never punished for it. Instead, he was encouraged to indulge his curiosity for observing nature, including wild animals and plants. Around 1464, Leonardo moved to Florence with his father, where his artistic skills began to flourish. He started sketching and drawing everything he observed which greatly impressed his father. Over the years recognizing his son's artistic potential, his father took him to a family friend Andrea del Verrocchio, who was a renowned Florentine sculptor and painter and arranged for him to become an apprentice when he was about 15 years old. Over the next 10 years, Leonardo honed his skills in painting and sculpture and also gained knowledge in the mechanical arts under Verrocchio's guidance. In 1472, at the age of 20, Leonardo da Vinci found himself at a significant juncture when the esteemed Painters Guild of Florence invited him to join. However, the young artist opted to continue his apprenticeship with Verrocchio, his mentor, until he became an independent master in 1478. During these formative years, Leonardo's talent began to shine, notably with his earliest known drawing in 1473, a landscape from the Feast of Santa Maria del Neve. In April of 1476, Leonardo da Vinci faced a grave accusation that could have drastically altered the course of his life. On the 9th of that month, he was charged with sodomy, a serious offense during the Renaissance period that carried severe penalties. The charges brought against him were not only a threat to his personal freedom, but also had the potential to tarnish his reputation and standing within the community. However, after a period of legal proceedings and uncertainty, the case was dismissed on June 16, allowing Leonardo to continue his pursuits without the shadow of these allegations hanging over him. In 1478, Leonardo da Vinci found himself amidst a turbulent political climate in Florence due to the Pazzi Conspiracy, a significant plot aimed at overthrowing the Medici rulers. This conspiracy not only shook the foundations of Florentine power structures, but also introduced a palpable sense of danger into the lives of those associated with the Medici family, including artists and intellectuals under their patronage. For Leonardo, who was emerging as a prominent figure in the artistic community, this period was fraught with uncertainty. The violent attempt to destabilize Florence's ruling class could have had dire consequences for him, both personally and professionally, as the city was engulfed in the chaos and repercussions of the failed coup. Amidst this unrest, he embarked on significant projects, including paintings of two Virgin Marys and the portrait of Ginevra de Bensi. 
His artistic endeavors reached a new height around 1481 when he received his first major commission, the Adoration of the Magi, for the Monastery of San Donato in Scopato, Florence. However, destiny intervened, and this work, like several others from this period, remained incomplete, showcasing the unpredictable path of Leonardo's early career. In 1482, Leonardo da Vinci made a significant move from Florence to Milan, a decision that marked a new chapter in his life and career. This relocation was driven by his desire to enter the service of Ludovico Sforza, the Duke of Milan, who was known for his patronage of the arts and sciences. Leonardo saw an opportunity in Milan to expand his horizons and apply his diverse talents in an environment that was embracing the Renaissance fervor sweeping through Italy. Upon his arrival in Milan, Leonardo quickly became immersed in the vibrant intellectual and artistic life at the Sforza court. It was during this period that he began to document his thoughts, observations, and inventions more diligently in his notebooks. These notebooks, filled with sketches, scientific diagrams, and reflections on a wide range of subjects, from anatomy to engineering, became a testament to Leonardo's insatiable curiosity and genius. His regular entries reveal the depth and breadth of his interests and provide insight into the mind of one of history's greatest polymaths. To uncover the mysteries behind Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks, which have ignited countless ideas and continue to inspire innovations in the modern world. Stay with us till the end of this video. Leonardo da Vinci received a commission to paint the Virgin of the Rocks in 1483, a project that would become one of his most celebrated works. This commission was part of an altarpiece for the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception in Milan, reflecting the religious devotion and artistic fervor of the time. The painting depicts the Virgin Mary, infant Jesus, John the Baptist, and an angel in a mystical, rocky grotto, showcasing Leonardo's mastery of atmospheric perspective and his deep understanding of human anatomy and emotion. The Virgin of the Rocks exists in two versions. The first, housed in the Louvre, was commissioned in 1483 and likely finished by 1486. The second, found in the National Gallery, was started in the late 1490s and completed by 1508. These timelines reflect Leonardo's evolving artistic journey, with each version showcasing distinct elements of his style and technique. During Leonardo da Vinci's residency in Milan, the city was severely affected by the plague around 1485. This epidemic led to significant loss of life and upheaval, impacting all facets of Milanese life, including its economy and the flourishing arts and culture sector. The pervasive fear and uncertainty of this period likely influenced the city's atmosphere and could have had implications for Leonardo's artistic endeavors and his relationship with his patrons, the Sforza family. In 1488, the art world suffered a significant loss with the death of Andrea del Verrocchio, Leonardo da Vinci's mentor and a prominent figure in the Florentine art scene. Verrocchio's passing marked the end of an era and possibly had a profound impact on Leonardo, who had learned much from his time in Verrocchio's workshop. The following year, in 1489, Leonardo delved deeply into the study of anatomy. His fascination with the human body led him to conduct detailed dissections, which informed his art and scientific inquiries, laying the groundwork for his later anatomical drawings that combined art with precise scientific observation. By 1490, Leonardo's focus shifted towards a monumental project for Ludovico Sforza, the Duke of Milan. He began work on a colossal bronze horse statue, a tribute to the Sforza dynasty's power and prestige. This period also saw Leonardo initiating a treatise on landscape and hydraulic engineering, reflecting his diverse interests and innovative thinking, although this work remained unfinished. Yet, as the tides of fortune turned, so too did the fate of Leonardo's monumental work. 
The shadows of war loomed over Milan, and the bronze reserved for the statue was seized to forge cannons, a stark reminder of the era's tumultuous priorities. The clay model, a fragile echo of what might have been, was lost to the ravages of conflict when the Sforza regime crumbled in 1499, leaving behind a tale of artistic ambition and the impermanence of glory. Additionally, 1490 was notable for the arrival of Salai, a young apprentice who would become one of Leonardo's closest companions, entering his household at the tender age of 10. This year was a time of significant artistic and personal developments for Leonardo, highlighting his multifaceted genius and the complex relationships that shaped his life and work. The following year, in 1493, a woman named Caterina joined Leonardo da Vinci's household in Milan. Her identity remains a subject of speculation, she may have been Leonardo's mother or a servant. Her arrival in Leonardo's life during this period adds an intriguing layer to the personal history of the artist. In 1494, the political landscape of Florence was dramatically altered as the fiery preacher Savonarola rose to power, ushering in a period of radical reform and moral austerity that contrasted sharply with the Medici's patronage of the arts. By 1495, Leonardo had begun one of his most renowned works, The Last Supper, in the convent of Santa Maria del Grazi. This mural, a mix of tempera and oil on plaster, was painted for the dining hall of the monastery of Santa Maria del Grazi. Known also as the Senecal, the mural spans approximately 15 by 29 feet and is da Vinci's only fresco that has survived. It beautifully captures the moment at the Passover feast when Jesus announces, one of you shall betray me, to his apostles. What sets this painting apart is the unique emotional expression and posture of each apostle, masterfully conveying their individual reactions to Jesus' words. The strategic placement of Jesus at the center, yet apart from the apostles, has left a lasting impact on the art world, inspiring countless artists through the ages. In 1496, Leonardo's engagement with the scientific community was highlighted through his collaboration with mathematician Fra Luca Pascioli. Leonardo illustrated Pascioli's work De Divina Proportion, a treatise on mathematical proportions and their applications in art and architecture, showcasing Leonardo's unique ability to blend art with science. In 1498, Leonardo da Vinci undertook the task of decorating the walls and ceiling of the Sala dell'Ars in the Sforza Castle in Milan, showcasing his versatility and creativity in mural painting. Around the same time, Leonardo's imagination soared as he made his initial forays into designing a flying machine, a testament to his visionary thinking in the realm of invention and engineering. This year also saw the dramatic end of Savonarola, the austere preacher who had taken control of Florence, as he was executed by burning at the stake. The following year, 1499, brought significant change when the French army conquered Milan, prompting Leonardo to leave the city amidst the upheaval. To unveil the intriguing adventures of Leonardo da Vinci in the early 1500s, Make sure you tune into our next episode, where the adventure continues. Believe me, you don't want to miss it. This is Rapid Rewind signing off. Remember, legends never fade, they just get retold. Stay tuned for the next one.